Hello my dear students. Hope you all are good at home. I am Anjana Jindal and I welcome you all in my English literature class. So children, today I am back here with chapter number 12 of our Mulberry book of class 4. And the name of our chapter is The Girl Who Hated Books. So children, in my previous video, that part 1 of this chapter, I had explained you the story. And now in this video, in this part 2, I am going to discuss some word meanings and few exercises of this chapter. Okay, so let's learn. So children, now here are the word meanings. See first is Confucius. See Confucius is the name of a Chinese scholar. Okay, now next Henry Thorey. Henry Thorey is also a name. It's the name of an American author and philosopher. Next word, dresser. It is a piece of wooden furniture with shelves on top and cupboards below. It's a wooden furniture where uh, below the cupboards are there and at the top shelves are there to keep the things. Okay. Next is cramped. Cramped means fitted tightly. As the uh, books were crammed in the fireplace, no? In Mina's house. Yes, means very tightly the books were packed in the fireplace even. Yeah, that is crammed. Next is toppling. It means becoming unsteady and falling down. Emu. It's a bird usually found in Australia that cannot fly. It's a flightless bird also we call. Okay. Now few more word meanings are there. So children, the next word is assortment. Assortment is a collection of different things or of different types of the same thing. Like you know an assortment is a big collection children. Like if you remember an, an assortment of monkeys uh, they were lying they were also there no. Yeah I means a lot of monkeys a big collection of monkeys there were running here and there. Isn't it? Yeah so that is assortment big collection. Next is juggling. Juggling is uh, throwing a set of three or more objects into the air. Catching and throwing them again quickly, one at a time. So, juggling, uh, children, have you ever seen a juggler in a circus? If you would have visited a circus, then you would have seen a juggler. Uh, what a juggler does, no? Uh, he used to throw two or more objects no, into the air and then catch them and then throw again and catch again quickly. One at a time, he is throwing and catching, no? So, that is the task which a juggler does, no? Yeah, so that is juggling. Right. Yeah. Next one is capes. Capes uh, means pieces of clothing like a coat without sleeves. As all the monkeys had torn down the curtains no, and they were using them as capes. They are simply wearing that. Isn't it? Yeah. So it's a clothing. Next is nibbling. Nibbling means taking small bites at a time. Like uh, the rabbits were nibbling on the table legs. No. Yeah, they were taking small, small bites, no, from the legs of the table. Yeah, the biting, that is nibbling, taking small bites. <coughs> Next is grunting. Grunting means making short, rough sounds. So, uh, children, you know, like uh, elephant grunts, no? Yeah, it makes uh, rough sounds, no? Yeah, short, rough sounds. Yeah, that is grunting. Now, the last word is slammed slammed means uh, closed something with a very loud noise so children if you remember when uh, when mina opened a book no uh, then the, the flock of birds flew out isn't it and she immediately slammed it means it slammed it shut again means she immediately closed the book so that uh, they could not uh, means uh, the more could not come out no yeah but it had not worked no because they already came out so slam this uh, simply means like close something with a very loud noise immediately closing something okay that is slammed so children these all are the word meanings which you all have to write in your mulberry copy very neatly okay write in a very neat and clean handwriting okay 
and learn also learn these word meanings and after learning you just write okay now see children this is an exercise uh, which is given in the beginning of the chapter okay here you have to put the words in the correct order to get some quotes about books okay so here the first quote is of confucius so confucius has given this quote and uh, they are written in jumble way so you have to write the words in correct order it's written here learn something then you cannot then opening then without last one is a book so you have to arrange in proper order so the proper order is you cannot learn something without opening a book isn't it yes it means you cannot learn something without opening a book so children until unless you will not open a book how will you learn you cannot learn anything no yes so this is the quote given by confucius that you cannot learn something without opening a book now next one is said by chinese proverb next one is chinese proverb see uh, try to find out the quote yes it is like a book is like a garden carried in a pocket a book is like a garden carried in a pocket yes like a garden you are carrying in your pocket na a lot of things are there in the book isn't it so many beautiful things the beautiful knowledge isn't it yes the garden full of not flowers but of knowledge okay so a book is like a garden carried in a pocket yes now next one henry thore the quote by henry thore now just find out yeah books are the treasured wealth of the world yes books are the treasured wealth of the world we see we get lot of knowledge from the books isn't it we are getting lot of things you know what are treasures what we which we keep uh, uh, feeling like very preciously no right so that is the books are the treasured wealth wealth not in terms of money but in terms of knowledge okay in terms of knowledge so books are the treasured wealth of the world now write a book quote of your own so children here it is written you means this you have to write with your own just think creatively and formulate your own answers okay so just do it so children next exercise is making connections in making connections here is quick answers so question 1 fill in the blanks so children here some blanks are given and you have to fill those blanks and complete the given sentences okay so let's see first one in most homes books are usually found on dash and dash so children in most homes books are usually found on yes bookshelves and bedside tables yes in most homes books are usually found on bookshelves and bedside tables now second one because she did not read them meena's books were covered in dash so meena's books see the stack of books were lying there no yeah on the top of which uh, the cat max was staying over there isn't it yeah so all they were covered with dust yes and why they were covered with dust because she didn't read them no she never used to take them and read she never read even a single book that's why they all were totally covered in dust yeah now the next one meena found max on top of a dash of books 
So children, dash of books, a collective noun for books. Think? Yes, stack. So Mina found Max on top of a stack of books. Yes. Now the next one. Mina slipped while she was trying to dash Max. She slipped no, and she got imbalanced. Yes, and she fell down. So what she was trying to do? Yes, she was trying to rescue Max. Yeah, she was trying to save, no? Yeah. So Mina slipped while she was trying to rescue Max. Now the last one is, people and animals fell out of the books and went back and only when Mina dash. So children, all the creatures, the people, animals, means all the creatures which fell out of the books, they went back and no. So when they went back into the books, only when Mina read them. Yes. So when Mina read. So these are the fill in the blanks which you have to do in your book. Okay. Now let's move to the next exercise. So children, here is uh, next question, question number 2. So here is a picture of the inside of Meena's house. So children, here is a picture of the Meena's house, inside his, her house. Okay. So you have to draw an arrow to show where you would find books if you went there. Means if you went to Meena's house, where would you find the books? Among these pictures. Okay. Draw double arrows to show all the places where Meena looked for maps. So you just have to draw an arrow to show where uh, you would find books. And you have to draw double arrows to show that the places where Meena looked for Max. When she called Max uh, uh, for breakfast, no? Max didn't come, no? Yeah. So she then, uh, she got up out of curiosity just to find him out. She looked for Max. So where are all the places that you have to show with the double arrows? So children, in your books, you can show with the single arrow and double arrows. But here now in this video, I am uh, showing you with the help of a table. Okay. I am just telling you with the help of a table. You can see here on your screen. Yes. So two columns are here. Uh, first one for find books. Another one looked for max. Okay. So where? Uh, where you would find books? If you went to Meena's house? Yes. In the dresser? Yes. Then drawers? Then desk, cupboard, sofa, chair. Yes, everywhere books. Isn't it? And where she looked for Max? Yeah, she looked for Max in the bathtub. Yes. And then at the top of the clock. Yeah. In the mat, below the mat. And on the window, window pane. Yes. So, this you can show in your book with the help of arrows. Okay. You just have to draw single and double arrows. So children, I hope you all have understood all the exercises well. Isn't it? Yes. So now it's the time for your home assignment. So children, in your homework, you have to learn all the word meanings. And after learning, you just write all the word meanings in your mulberry copy very neatly. And all the exercises in your Mulberry book. Okay. And see one more homework. Very interesting homework is there for you. Yes. See. Here it is. Yes. Here you have to identify the types of sentence in each set. Place the correct punctuation mark at the end of each sentence. See children. If you remember your chapter number 1 of your English grammar book. That first chapter is the sentence. Isn't it? There in that chapter you have read about the different kinds of sentences. Like imperative, interrogative, exclamatory, assertive. The sentences, imperative, uh, those which are the commands or the orders, commands, orders or the requests. Isn't it? And what all are the punctuation marks are being used in such type of sentences. You all know very well, no? Yes. So recall all those things. And then do this homework. Okay. So okay. Now with this I am going to conclude my class. Thank you for watching the video. 
Bye-bye and take care.